The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I've sat through a few Prime Minister's statements in my time, but that would be the worst, Mr. Speaker. That would be the worst. That was a do-nothing speech from a do-nothing government that has sat on the sidelines while New Zealand has gone backwards. And you know what the Prime Minister's big claim to fame was when he began that speech? It was the Rugby World Cup. All his own work. All his own work. Helen Clark got the Rugby World Cup for New Zealand. Trevor Mallard got the World Cup for New Zealand. And we will win that cup. But it was Labor's, Labor's responsibility that we got that. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, I remember a year ago, I remember a year ago when the Prime Minister came into the House for the same occasion and he promised us something. He said New Zealand will come aggressively out of recession. Aggressively out of recession. You know, Mr Speaker, I was watching the Prime Minister on television yesterday morning and you know what he said? You know what he said? He said he couldn't rule out, he couldn't rule out that New Zealand was slipping back into recession. Two and a quarter years, Mr Speaker, and it is Mr Key and his government's responsibility for this country going backwards. You know, he came up with all sorts of figures. They say there are lies, damn lies and statistics. Let's have a look at it. Prime Minister said that early childhood education and participation in it had hardly moved forward. Well, in due course, I'll seek to table this document, Mr Speaker. Pacifica early childhood education participation went up nearly 10 per cent, Mr Key, nearly 10 per cent. And the last few months I've been going around the early childhood centres for our Māori and our Pacifica and our Pākehā kids. And they say that Mr Key's government is forcing up costs while dropping the quality. Forcing up costs. There are mums and dads in the last week that are paying $25 a week, Mr Key, more for their little ones to have quality early childhood education. And that is your work. Every year under Labor, participation went up. And then Mr Key tried to tell us that everyone was better off. You know, the figures came out last week. It was on wages, Mr Key, 1.7 per cent increase last year, calendar year, 2010. And the figures came out before that about inflation, 4 per cent increase in prices last year. What is it, Mr Speaker, that the Prime Minister doesn't understand about the fact that prices went up twice the rate of uh, wages last year. And then, and then he came out yesterday with a big increase for the people at the bottom. The vulnerable, he said. He would stand up for the vulnerable. You know what he gave the vulnerable yesterday? 25 cents an hour. 25 cents an hour, Mr Speaker, from the man that took $1,000 a week from his own tax cuts. $1,000 a week from his own tax cuts. He says that he stands up for the vulnerable and he gave them 25 cents an hour. And I wonder about those vulnerable people, Mr Key, in McGee and Close. The little vulnerable girl that, you, that he exploited by taking up to Waitangi. Where is she and her family? And why, Mr Key, why did Mr Key not front up on television on Friday night to explain to the people in McGee and Close why their power prices were up, why their petrol prices were up, why food prices were up, and they were worse off, Mr Key, and you would not, he would not front up, Mr Speaker, to answer their challenges. Exploit the little girl for Waitangi Day three years ago, won't front up, just as he didn't front up to the Pike River families and give them the news that he was not going to see the recovery of the bodies. That's what the families told me. That's what the families told me. 
They said the government will come down, the government will spend 400000 on Television New Zealand so they can cover the great man's speech, but when the hard decisions have to be told, no one was to be seen from the government. That was passed off to the coal, that was passed off to the, my, the company, that was passed off to the receivers of the company, that was passed off to the police, and Mr Brownlee knows it. I want to say, Mr Speaker, that the economy of New Zealand has stalled. The unemployment figures, Mr Key, were up 8,000. Mr Key and Ms Bennett told us they'd peaked a year ago. They were up 8,000. That is 700 New Zealanders, 700 Kiwi breadwinners each week that joined the unemployment uh, scrap heap over the last three months. 700 New Zealanders. And what does Mr Key say? Oh, oh, the, they were old figures. They were old figures, Mr Key. They were the latest figures to the end of December, the 31st of December 2010. And then he said, it's just a survey. It's just a survey. That is the survey that New Zealand has relied on for 25 years as the most, the most accurate portrayal of what is happening in unemployment. Look at those figures. He talks about the weak and the vulnerable. I want to know, Mr Key, why it's satisfactory that one school leaver in four goes out of school and onto the unemployment scrap heap. One school leaver in four. And if you talk, if, you, if the Prime Minister talks, if the Prime Minister talks about the vulnerable, what about teenage Maori girls? One and two, Mr Key, one and two that go out of school and onto the unemployment scrap heap. And what about the youth guarantee? What was the youth guarantee about? Our young people should be either learning or earning, Mr Key. One in four of them shouldn't be going on to the unemployment scrap heap. And I listen, I listen to this stuff about welfare reform and how Mr Key wants them to work. Mr Key, have a look at this. This is the Waikato Times just on Saturday. Where are the jobs? This is, this is what the headline says. Where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? Because I believe in welfare reform, Mr Key, and the best type of welfare reform is to have jobs that people can go to. Have jobs that people can go to. And while you're chasing around for the people that you or your Minister of Social Welfare would like to call bludgers, what about Peterina Slater? There she is on the front page. 150 job interviews she's done and been turned down every time. You know, people in my electorate understand that. 150 jobs available in a supermarket with 2,500 people chasing them. And I want to know, Mr Key, why it is that Australia could create 1,000 jobs a day last year when New Zealand went back backwards. New Zealand went backwards. And was it the boast of the Prime Minister that we would catch up with Australia? Wasn't that the boast of the Prime Minister? Now, the Prime Minister will say, but they've got minerals. But he knew Mr that. Key knows that our dairy prices, our lamb prices, our beef prices, our forestry prices, our wool prices have never been higher than they are today. That money is rolling into New Zealand but where is the plan for employment, Mr Key? We've had enough of the gimmicks, the job summit, the cycle way. 7,000, 8,000 people joined the unemployment queues in the last quarter, and Mr Key's cycle ways created 200 jobs. 200 jobs. We want a plan from this government that would see people back at work. Why doesn't the government listen to Sir Paul Callaghan? New Zealander of the Year, and Paul stood up and said, why would we, with our branding of clean, green New Zealand, follow a plan to mine our national parks? Why did National waste two years on a plan that would have destroyed and undermined our image when it should have been talking about using brain power, high skill, high tech, high wage? And I go to the clean tech industries, Mr Key, and they say, what is this government doing? 
There's the fastest growing area in the world. PricewaterhouseCoopers says at least $8 billion a year that we can earn from clean tech. And what is this government is doing? Two years and they've set up a committee. Two years and they've set up a committee, Mr Speaker. You know, it's a little bit like savings, isn't it? We know we need saving to invest in our future. We know that. They had nine years in opposition to work out a plan for saving. They had two years in government, and after nine years in opposition and two years in government, they set up a committee. Not good enough, Mr Key. Not good enough by a long run to have 158,000 of our fellow New Zealanders out of work and there is no plan from that government to do anything at all about it, Mr Speaker. And then there's the question, then there's the question of prices and wages. How can people possibly be better off, Mr Key, when prices have gone up by 4% and wages have gone up by 1.7%? Mr Key said in his speech that incomes had gone up. Well, I listened to the Department of Statistics, Statistics New Zealand, and what did they say? Median income fell last year. Medium income fell last year, Mr Key. New Zealanders aren't better off. The government has ignored the middle income of New Zealand. They at best stood still. Most of them went back. The government has forced low-income people below the poverty line, Mr Key, and the only people that benefited from the national government tax swindle were the top 10 per cent who got most of the money. That's the truth. That's the truth, Mr Key, and you know it. And the people that go through the supermarket checkouts know it, and they won't listen to the national government spin on this. They know when they're not better off because of the policies of this government, Mr Speaker. Mr Key was talking about the block of cheese. Remember that? The block of cheese. How much does that cost now, Mr Key? Does the member have any idea? Less, he said. It's gone up 20% in the last year. 20% in the last year. And what about food prices? 5% in the last year. What about power prices? You know, I've got constituents that have come to me and said, I've got two letters from my power company in the last four months. One on the 1st of October, Mr Key, when Mr Key's government pushed up the price with GST and the emission trading scheme. And they got another one last week, another one last week to say the power prices are going up again. Now, Mr Speaker, the great plan of the government to solve our problems is to slash spending on health and education and to sell off our assets. Sell off our assets. Now, I wonder what the private sector investors will do when they've bought up our power companies. I wonder what the private sector investors will do. Oh, they're going to the mums and dads, the National Party says. The mums and dads. What about the mums and dads that can't put money together to save because of the rising cost of living? They will lose ownership of our assets. They will gain nothing. And the mums and dads that National promised for Contact Energy, the mums and dads, you know what happened? Those shares went to the big corporates. That's where they've ended up. That's where they've ended up, the big corporates. And not only that, Mr Key, they've ended up in the hands of foreigners. You know, most of the $1.5 billion in dividends from Contact Energy doesn't go back to New Zealanders who once owned it. It goes overseas. That money is going overseas that makes our country worse off. And then I saw an economist in the paper saying, where is Mr Key at in thinking that it makes sense to sell the assets? Where is he at? He said, we pay 5.5% on the debt and we get a 7.3% return on the investment. How does it make business sense to sell off our assets? And what is the Prime Minister's next trick when he's sold them? When he's sold them, because you can only sell them once and we won't get them back. Oh, hang on, hang on. We might get them back. I recall being a member of the last Labor government that had to buy back Air New Zealand and New Zealand Rail. Air New Zealand and New Zealand Rail. Remember the talk about, we'll sell Air New Zealand in the private sector. Yes, but we learnt. We learnt. And this, this national government has learnt nothing.
Labor did not sell a single asset in the fifth Labor government. For nine years, we did not sell those assets, Mr Speaker. We had to buy them back because when the National Party sold New Zealand Rail to Mr Fay and Mr Rich White, they asset stripped it. They ran it into the ground. It was sold at bargain basement prices by the National Government and we had to buy it back. And I say to this government, go to the electorate in November this year on selling the assets because you will listen to what New Zealanders are saying. Mr Key said arrogantly last, year, last week he didn't care what New Zealanders thought. Wasn't, wasn't that what the member said? Wasn't that what the member said? Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll table the transcript. He said that he didn't care what New Zealanders think. But New Zealanders care deeply about selling assets that they, belo they own, that they own where the benefits come back to New Zealanders. And then there was that other issue, it was about farmland. And I heard something that Mr Key said that I agreed with. No, it's not totally surprising, but he said New Zealanders should not be tenants in their own land. Well, I wonder, Mr Key, why it was that German interests bought up in the last couple of weeks $100 million worth of dairy farms. I wonder why that was. More than they had spent in the five years previously. We're losing those assets. I wonder whether the national government will stop the Chinese consortium from buying up prey for farms. I wonder whether they'll do that. And you know, Mr Key, yesterday I went to Rotorua and I met with a big forestry company. And you know what they said to me? They said what we're really worried about is that the American interests that own the cutting rights to the forests will find it more profitable to sell the logs overseas without being processed in New Zealand rather than keeping the 290 jobs that we create for people in Rotorua. That's what New Zealand Enterprise is worried about. And this government has mouthed the words and the rhetoric, but they've done nothing about the sell-off of New Zealand to overseas interests. Mr Speaker, this government has failed. It's failed to create growth. It's failed to bring unemployment down. It's failed to keep people's incomes ahead of the cost of living. And it's failed to make New Zealand a more equal, a fairer place. For nine years under a Labour government, we reversed the trend to a more unequal country and we treated New Zealanders inclusively, working for families, decent rises in minimum wage. And Mr Key has turned the clock back to make this country less fair, less equal, less opportunity for every New Zealander to make the most of what he or she can contribute to this country. After two and a quarter years, this is Mr Key's responsibility and this election will be about restoring to New Zealanders a fair go, making sure that people pay a fair share and get a fair share in return, and making sure we don't attack the vulnerable, our children at early childhood education who are paying higher fees, our adults wanting second chance education uh, in adult and community education, and the old people, Mr Key, that you have taken off the health care, the home care that enable them to live in dignity in their own home. There will be a Labour-led government and we will return fairness to New Zealand and we will return growth and living standards and jobs to this country.